Hey, this is Horner, and we're looking at 2008 AP Physics C Mechanics, uh, question number three. On this one, we've got a elastic cord. Its length is 0.6 meters, so that's our L, is 0.6 meters. A student hangs the cord and then attaches a bunch of different things to the cord. So you'll notice that when there's no weight on it, it's 0.6 meters. When there's 10 newtons of weight, it stretches to 0.97, then 1.24, and then just keeps going up. So we're going up by the same amount with weight, but our length is um, is changing a little bit as we go. So the first thing that we need to do is use the data to plot a graph of weight versus length, uh, and then sketch a best fit line. So this should be relatively simple to do. Uh, it's a good way to get two really easy points. You get one point for plotting all the points correctly, so or at least four of them is what it says. Since there's five, they give you a little bit of, of wiggle room here. Uh, the next point would be about right here, so that would be 10 at one at about 0.97. Uh, the next point should be somewhere in this area because it is 15 and it's about 1.24. Uh, next one would be 20 at 1.37. So that point would be probably about right there. And then finally 25 is over here at about 1.64. Whoops. Uh, actually going to move that one over just a little bit. So we need to move this one over to 1.64, which is somewhere there. Now we need to draw a best fit line. So I'm going to grab my best fit line tool that I have, and I'm going to start it here, and I'm going to try to get it to go up. I want to try to make sure that I have points both on the top and on the bottom of that line. And it looks like my best fit line would stretch through about right there. I uh, probably don't want to make it so long. I probably need to back it off so that it's still on the graph. Uh, but then that's kind of where it should end. Now that we've done that, uh, and we've got our best fit line on, next thing we need to do here, I'm going to move this over just a slight bit because I think it moved when I did it. There we go. Uh, now that we've got it on there pretty well, uh, they want us to determine the experimental value of the spring constant. And we know that uh, the spring constant here, if you remember, f is equal to kx. And so what we can do with this is we can just rearrange it for k. k is equal to f over x. And that means that I can just take the force, which is the weight, and the length, which is, the, um, which is our x, I guess. And we can just say that that's the slope. So the slope should be equal to the k value. Um, that's the first thing that we need to do. Next thing we need to do is actually solve for that. So if we go through, it looks like at 20, we're right at 1.4. So I'm going to do 20. I'm going to do 1.4. And then we know at the zero point, I'm right at 0.6. So that makes it a little bit easier. So this is um, 0.6. And if I solve then for the slope, I will get a value for what I'm doing of somewhere around 25 newtons per meter. So you get one point for saying you're going to find that the slope is going to give you the k value. You then plug all your numbers in, you get another point, and then you get one more point for actually having the right answer. They'll take anything from 23 up to and uh, including 27 newtons per meter. So that gives you a little wiggle room as far as your graph. All right, so now that we've done that, we need to look at the next part of the problem. They have taken that cord and they've attached it to this ring stand and they've put a mass on it and they play bungee jump with it. So the ball is dropped and the cord stretches out. So it actually doesn't stretch. It actually just extends until it's right here. So this value right here is going to be 0.6 meters. But it says that when you drop it, it actually falls all the way down to 1.5 meters. So that 1.5 meters is actually all the way down. We need to figure out what is the stretch. So how far is the stretch x? And if I take that 1.5 and I subtract um, that 0.6, I should end up with 0.9. And that's, my, uh, that's how far it's stretched. So that's my 0.9 meter stretch. And that's going to be important when we do this so that we can calculate the, uh, the mass of that object. We've got a few heights here. We're going to say mg. Well, we know that the potential energy, really, the potential energy due to gravity at the top should be equal to the potential energy of the spring at the bottom. Uh, potential energy due to gravity is mg 
and then we're going to call this y max because that's the maximum extension of the of that uh, of that ball or that's the maximum distance that it's going to fall and then we also need to do uh, the spring energy which is one half k x squared so above this I'm just going to put ug is equal to u s so potential energy of gravity potential energy of the spring and they should be the same at both those points uh, notice the ball is not moving at either of those points so we can't say anything about the kinetic energy all right now at this point they want us to find m so let's rearrange this for m so m is going to be equal to k x squared all over 2 g y max let's plug some numbers in here we know that our k value for this was 25 we know that the stretch, okay, so we have to be careful because we want x. We want just the stretch of the, of the spring itself, and the spring is really just the spongy cord, and that stretch was 0.9. So we're going to square it. We're going to put that over 2 times 10, and then we're going to multiply that times the total distance that it fell, which is 1.5 meters. When we solve for this, you should get 0.68 kilograms using 10. If you use 9.8, you're going to get 0.69. It'll be a little bit bigger because the number on the bottom is a little bit smaller. And that is the mass of the ball. Next thing they want us to do here is they want us to figure out what is... Oh, I lost my mouse. There we go. Uh, they want us to figure out in the next part how far down uh, the object has fallen at the moment it attains maximum speed. So uh, this is a little bit harder to do because we can't really think about that, that setup. So we've got the setup with the bar. Okay, so here's the bar. We've got, the, uh, we've got this little table thing here. I've uh, got the pole coming up attached to it. And then the ball falls down. And then it gets to the bottom once it stretches. So we're trying to figure out where is the maximum speed. Um, so to do that, let's think about the sum of the forces. If it has reached the maximum speed, okay, there's no more force acting on it. So the sum of the forces should be equal to zero at max velocity. Why is that? Because there should be no acceleration on it at all. So if there's no acceleration on it at all, then it should be the sum of the forces should be equal to zero. So let's think about the two forces are acting on this. Uh, at this point, wherever that is, we know that pulling down on it is mg, and pulling up on it is going to be the force of the spring. And remember, the force of a spring is kx. So we'll just put fs here, and this is really the force due to gravity. So they should be the same, they should be equal to each other, because if we say mg is going down, and we're saying down is positive, minus fs oops so let's go ahead and put in uh, minus kx here minus kx that should be equal to zero so mg is equal to kx and uh, we already know what m is we're looking for x we already know what k and g are so if we want x it's just mg all over k uh, the mass we calculated to be about 0.69 gravity let's just use 9.8 here and then we need to use the value for k, which was 25. Uh, and we had solved for that earlier, too. We're going to get a stretch of about 0.27 meters. So that's the position that it's at when it's going as fast as it can go. Um, so that is if you think about it um, falling. And you've got to remember, it started to fall up here. It came down, and then it started to stretch. So this distance is really from this point, okay? So we're measuring from here to here. This is the new x. So when you solve for this x, it's where it starts to stretch. It's still speeding up until it gets to a point. That's why you can't just use this unstretched length. If you could, we would have just written that down, but you can't. So now we've got to say the y position where the speed is a maximum really is equal to that 0.27. So that's this distance plus this unstretched length. And what did we say that unstretched length was? We said that unstretched length was 0.6 meters. 
Um, so the, the speed is not the highest right where it starts to get stretched. It's actually a little bit lower than that. So it's actually about it right at this point. And that point would be 0.87 meters. So you've got to be really careful with this when everybody thinks that that maximum speed is going to be right at the point where it's no longer um, unstretched. So where it's just going to be stopped and it's going to start stretching. It actually still is picking up a little bit of speed until the stretch really starts to pick up. Uh, and that's dependent upon the K value. So if your K value was bigger, you would have it up here a little bit more. If your K value is smaller, it would be down here. It's like the difference between taking a slinky and attaching a ball to it or taking a garage spring. So it's going to hit maximum speed a lot sooner. I guess garage spring wouldn't be best, but you get the point. And uh, so that is part I. The next part that we have to do is part double I. It says explain why this point is the point where it reaches maximum speed. Um, so there's a couple ways you can say it. The first one that you would say is the acceleration is zero. So we've already done that, really. Um, and so you and you have to get the answer for part I right. That's one of the things. But here we're going to just say that the force is equal to zero. So that's where the two forces are going to equal out. And that's where your acceleration is equal to zero. So your velocity should be at a maximum. Um, any other statement that you could say uh, where you would say something like um, the velocity changes from increasing to decreasing? So the V goes from increasing, whoops, N-C-R-E-A-S-I-N-G, to decreasing. And it's not going to happen right at that point where it's starting to stretch. It's just after it started to stretch. So that's what you need to say. But the biggest thing is um, the sum of the forces is equal to zero and therefore the acceleration is zero. If you have this, you're going to get one of the two points. And then if you talk about the velocity going from an increasing to a decreasing um, value, then that's going to be it. They want us now to calculate the maximum speed of the object. So yes, this is a very long problem, but it's worth 15 points. And you only have three of these to answer in that 90 minutes. So that really makes it a little bit better. So here, what we're going to do is we need to think about energy again. And if we think about energy, we know that we have mg, and then we said it was yv max. Okay, so at the maximum speed, this is the uh, the potential energy at the very top should be equal to one half of kx squared. So that's the stretched uh, rubber band or bungee cord plus one half mv max squared. So we know that when this thing falls, it starts at the top, okay? All the energy is potential energy due to gravity, and then it falls all the way down. Now, when it falls all the way down, all the energy here at this point is 1 half kx squared. When it hits this point, our ug is equal to 0, right? And at this point, now we have a little bit of the 1 half kx squared, so we have a little bit of stretch and we have all of our mv squared. So that's all of the energy uh, that we can have that's going to make this a maximum. Okay. So we know that as it falls, it's going to always have a little bit of potential energy. So here, there's none of this. Uh, so it's you've got kinetic there. But we also have to kind of think about um, this potential and the, and the spring and kind of what's happening at those points. So let's go ahead and solve this for the maximum speed. To do that, we need to move this um, move this mgy over to the other side. So we're going to say 1 half mv max squared should be equal to mgy at that maximum speed. And then we need to subtract off 1 half kx squared. So it's where these are going to be a minimum. Um, now we can solve for v max squared, and that's equal to 2 times gravity times the y at our maximum speed minus k over m times x squared. So notice we multiply both sides by 2. When we do that, we get rid of the half here. 
put a 2 in front here, and then we need to divide both sides by m, and when I do that, this m crosses off, and now I have an m underneath of uh, the 1 here. So now we can go ahead and solve this, so we're going to say vmax squared is equal to 2 times 9.8, and then we said that that speed was happening at 0.87 meters uh, minus, and now, oops, you know what, we forgot the k here. Now we've got minus, and we're going to put k, which was 25, over m, which is 0.69, times 0.27 squared. So now v max squared, so this is still v squared. I'm just going to change it to v squared is equal to 14. 0.4 meters squared per second squared, and so our velocity is 3.8 meters per second, and that is the end of this problem.